Hello and welcome to Larkbright. Today I'm going to show you how to make a heater shield like this one. So, if this is something that interests you, stay tuned and I'll show you exactly how I made this. Let's first talk about possible core materials. You can construct a shield without a core and will be very light and flexible and could potentially be used to strike someone with. Uh, it's a very safe construction and lots of commercial built shields use this kind of construction. This is just two 10 millimeter four mats glued together and I put some Kevlar reinforcements between there so my leather strips here wouldn't easily rip out. The disadvantage with this construction is that it is very light and wobbly. If you make a big shield out of it it will bend, it will wobble, and it won't really give you the feeling of holding a real shield that will really protect you. And if you are hit on it, you feel the impact. If you are hit on a shield with a rigid core, most attacks just bounce off. It's like holding a wall. So I personally prefer Shields with cores. Now you could use a PVC core, something like a rain barrel, a PVC rain barrel, or the lid they are off, will work pretty well. And you can make domed shields, and it's a thermal plus, so you can form it with the heat gun. And you can uh, make Curved shields, when you um, cut it out of a barrel, you can get like three or four nice curved shields out of it. It's not a bad material, but I won't be using it mainly because of one reason. That reason is this shield. I built this shield ten years ago and it has a core of 5 mm thick multiplex plywood with a reinforcement wooden bar glued in here. And this shield has lasted 10 years. And I've been fighting hard with it. I had like big guys charge at me and drop off the shield like water. This is like holding a wall or a door. Yeah, sure, it's a bit heavier, especially this one, because I put a lot of latex on it. But it's a really solid construction. So, I will make a shield for a friend from this 5mm multiplex plywood board. And I will make another shield from these two 5mm plywood multiplex bores and I want to make a curved shield so I will glue these together and strap them to a curve and once the glue sets I will have a nice curved core for my shield. I'm making a rounded core so, first thing I have to do is glue the two 3mm parts together. So I'm using my regular wood glue and I use lots of it and a brush. And maybe I could have used some more, maybe I diluted it a bit with water to make it easier to work with. But basically make sure your wood is very well covered with the glue.
and then just put the other board on top of it. And it's good to go on your block. I'm using my uh, car tires, my summer tires here. My winter tires are currently on, so these were free. And I clamped down and clamped together the sides of the boards so they wouldn't bend when I use some wretched straps to bind and bend the boards over the car tires. I used to have something like a wooden frame with the perfect curvature, but I made that 10 years ago and I couldn't find it anywhere when I went ahead to make this shield. So two car tires it is. Worked fairly well. Tightening down the ratchet straps. One at a time a bit, then change it on the other one and slowly tighten both of them until the plywood is flash with the tires. Make sure everything is fixed and secure and let it dry overnight. Next day I take everything up and the wood stays in shape. So far so good. Time to cut the whole thing in shape. Remember when designing the shape of your shield, we will put five centimeters of foam on each edge. So it should be 10 centimeters too short and 10 centimeters too narrow. So your final design isn't too large. I'm using my big Taylor's triangle here to form the upper part of the shield. And this is actually somewhat of a hybrid between a kite shield and a heater shield in form and size. And here I'm bending some metal, some leftover metals from how to make splint grief, splint armor. Just so I have a pattern and can make both sides the same shape. This shield build was inspired by my Dark Souls 3 character who plowed through the game with the Dragon Quest shield. So this is similar in form and size to that shield. Using a jigsaw to cut it out and make sure not to cut into your supports while doing so. Also remember to wear proper protection. Check for size. Not bad, 
will be a bit bigger later on. These leather straps used to be a belt. I wore for 16 years until the belt buckle broke and I decided to put it in my lab resources. Want to use these straps as a grip, but where the hand goes I want to have some padding, else you will hurt your knuckles when someone really slams into your shield. So I'm using a bit of a wool blanket as padding and some leather from old couch. And I'm gluing it together and gluing it on to start with. I'm going have gone for one layer of wool blanket, but you might want to actually take two layers to get more padding. I'm securing them to the plywood with rooftop nails, like two centimeter long rooftop nails. The same ones I actually use to fix the roof on my shed. Put some of them all around and then two in the middle to keep it all tight and secure. Hammer down and I'm using an anvil to bend over the tips of the nails so they don't poke out at all. It's nice and flush as far as possible at least. Now for the leather straps I need longer nails so these are twice as long so about four centimeters. Still rooftop nails, still the same one I used to fix my rooftop. This is the spot where my hand will go. And how the straps work is you have a pair of straps you put your hand through and you pull them together to get a really nice strong hold on your shield. If you just put one strap on there, you can hold the shield but it's kind of wobbly. With two straps you can pull together to tighten the grip to get a really secure grip on your shield. I'm making sure I got the right length. I'm just nailing it down, bending it over on the anvil. Only then am I cutting down my length of leather strap to use as little as possible because I don't have a limitless supply of this one belt I'm using for this. I'm using some sanding paper because I didn't like how hard and sharp the edges of the cuts were. Now for the arm strap. You can use uh, one single vertical arm strap, but what I wanted to try on this shield and what I found to work better is if you put one horizontal strap there and then after you put your arm through, you rotate at 90 degrees and that will tighten the strap on your arm. And I'm putting a buckle on here so I can adjust the width of this loop so it will fit no matter what kind of armor I wear or if someone else were to use the shield he could adjust the strap for his preferred width. But what this horizontal and then twisted in strap gives you, it makes it very easy to put on the shield fast and to put off the shield fast. 
because the opening of the strap in the horizontal position is very big and only when you twist your arm to grab hold of the shield does it tighten on your arm. And that makes it just so much easier, so much faster to put on the shield. I'm really in love with this design. Also depending on how you put the shield on, if you put your arm through from the top or from the bottom, you hold this shield slightly different at a slightly different height, so it gives you some options. Now with this secure, you could potentially put more grips on the shield, more straps on the shield to hold it in different ways. But I was quite happy with how this one grip worked out. So what I'm now putting on is a strap to put the shield on my back. And I want to put it on my back at an angle so I don't hit it with my ankles when walking, which happened with my last shield. So this is nice at an angle and won't hinder my walking. Time for the next step. I'm cutting a 5 cm piece of some leftover foam and that will be used in the next step. This is 1 cm thick, 10 mm thick, plus soda weapons foam. And I'm using this 5 cm piece I cut to measure 5 cm from every edge of the shield. First I put on the form of the shield on the foam, and then I use this piece to go all the way around and make sure it's 5 cm everywhere. There's really no reason to make it any thicker than 5 cm, but I personally wouldn't make it any thinner either. This is a pretty good measurement for all your shield edges. Cut it all out with a brake knife, and this gives me the front cover of the shield. I'm using some sanding paper to roughen up all of the surfaces. Doing that to every piece of foam I want to glue together. Only if the surface is rough does the glue get enough surface area to actually stick to. Don't roughen up the surface of the wood as it is already pretty rough and actually soaks the glue in a bit. And I'm using my Hubel Fix glue that is usually used to glue together shoes and soles, so it's very tough stuff. And it's a contact glue. So I spread it on both sides I want to glue together. And then I let it dry for 10 minutes. And then it is dry to the touch, but it will stick to itself. So I press the two pieces together after waiting for 10 minutes. And the glue will stick together. And press together tightly and won't come apart anytime soon. It's a very strong glue. You can also use it like just a regular old glue if you want to move the pieces around, but for this kind of work it's much easier to have it as a contact glue and not have to wait till it 
dry soldering your pieces together for 10 minutes. And minutes later, dry to the touch. What I'm trying to do here is start at a corner, then go all along the edge where I marked it down and roll it into place and press it together firmly. Especially at the edges. This is 6mm plus solder weapons foam and I am cutting 5cm pieces, strips, to glue them to the edge of the shield. Three of them should be enough, they are a meter long and of course I roughen them up. And then I spread my glue evenly on both the strips and the uh, back side of the front side of the shield, the front foam. And I'm not putting any of the edge of the core, because at this point it would only make it harder to glue anything into place. Just on the foam and I will worry about the edge later. So spread it out, let dry for 10 minutes then it's time to put it on. I find if you slightly press it together on the inside edge, these thin strips of foam will easily enough go around a soft bend and only if you have like a corner or if you were to make a very small shield do you actually have to worry about cutting round pieces. Foam's flexible enough to follow a slight curve, no problem. And here at the bottom corner there was a little gap left because uh, the edge is actually a bit further than 5 centimeters. That's where I designed it. So I uh, used some leftover pieces and filled the hole. And then press it all down. Cut some more foam. This is once again 10 millimeter strong weapons foam and it is about seven maybe eight centimeters wide and this gives me the back cover of the core. You could try to cover the whole of the core on the back with weapons foam and that can look pretty good but I find it's a more complicated build, especially with straps like this. So I only cover the edges and the rest of the back side of the shield will just be the plywood. Now with this piece, the curve on the top of the shield was too harsh, so I got a fold in there and I had to cut it out but I cut out too much and put a little bit of leftover material as it's infill in there. But overall, you know, not too complicated to put this all into place. And once again, press it down. Make sure all of it sticks together firmly. 
after it has dried overnight, I'm trimming off the edges with my break knife. That will save me time on the next step. Using my belt sander, I flatten out all of the edges of the shield so they are nice and plain. And I round off the corners just a little bit. Now this is optional but I found it looks better. I put a 1mm thick strip of weapons foam right on the edge. That will make it look very nice and flat. And I made this like 2mm thicker than the shield so I could cut it off and sand it plain so it would fit perfectly. And this will give me kind of iron reinforcement on the final shield that's placed all around the edge, reinforcing the wood and leather structure, speaking if this were a real shield. Now it's time to paint. I'm using pure, undiluted, uncolored latex paint and I spread it with a foam type paint roller. Found this is the easiest method to get a good even coat of paint. It's also pretty fast compared to a brush and it's not as work intensive in cleaning as airbrush techniques. Get a good even coat of paint, make sure you've got no paint noses or something and you need 5 to 10 layers of this stuff. Let it dry for 10 minutes to an hour depending on weather, put another layer on and you get a nice thick coat of this. I used seven layers on this shield. Mixing some red paint, I'm using pure artist's pigment and I'm solving them in as little water as possible and then put my latex paint base in it, mix it and once again, using my roller, I put the paint on. It looks pink now, but once the base dries, it will become a dark red. And I did about four layers of this till it had the coverage I needed. And the grey paint I'm putting on now is actually black. And I put two layers of the black on the edge with my base. Now it's time to make or break the shield. I'm using some golden paint to paint a dragon on it, because it was inspired by the Dragon Quest shield. And what I really should have done is uh, take a piece of cardboard in the shape of the shield and Use a pencil to pre-paint the dragon to lay it out and then just copy it on the shield. Because I'm not quite happy how this turned out. I think it's not too bad in the final product with all the dirt I put on. Also at some point before painting put on some wear and tear marks, some slashes on the shield with a um, soldering iron but I forgot to film it. But you can see how the slashes in the paint now. The edges of the shield get a golden dry brush, meaning I have just a bit of paint on my brush here after leaving most of it on a paper towel. And I just brush this along the edge and this gives the appearance of something old and weathered with some patina to it. What I'm making here is something I learned from miniature painters. I'm making a wash. So I'm using some brown pigment, some black, some paint base and lots of water. 
make a very thin paint. And what this does, it sticks in the crevices of the shield and makes it look old and dirty. Then it's time to finish the front side of the shield with the top coat. Here I'm using flexi paint, but you really should be using isoflex, which works much better. But isoflex is a nasty toxic product, so when you're using it, make sure the room is well aired and you're using protective equipment. After the top coat is dried, I'm putting silicone spray on it so it doesn't stick, turn it around so I can paint the back side. Just using some red paint here, make sure all of the foam is sealed and about a centimeter of the wood. And really, here I found out I should have used a paint roller because brushing it took so much time. And I put about four layers on there again to make out the coverage I needed. Now once again I'm putting top coat on it, which should be isoflex. Let that dry overnight. Then put a final coat of silicon spray on it, or you could use talcum powder. And this point in the build talcum powder would actually be preferable but I had the silicone spray at hand put some more on the front and this finishes the build time to film the introduction hope you like the video that's it for today thanks and goodbye